This segment is brought to you by Jigmasters. Step up your game with high quality performance jigs, spinner baits, buzz baits, and more from Jigmasters.com. And always, when in doubt, get the jig out. Welcome to the Paddle and Fin Podcast Network. This is the final cast segment with your hosts, Brad Hicks and Josh Eldridge, where we cast our final opinions on all products, good and bad. Welcome to the final cast. And it's Thursday, which means it's the final cast on Paddle and Fin Network. I'm your host, Josh. I'm Brad. And tonight, we have Mark Bersani from Loveland Canoe and Kayak, me and Brad's local shop. Mark, welcome to the show, buddy. How are you doing? Well, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, guys. This is really cool. It was fun to see your intro, and you guys really have a professional show going. Somewhat. We, we, we try. <laughs> Sort we just of. like to have fun with it. Just a little bit. Profession, guys. You're professional. <laughs> it's, it starts out professional and just usually takes us to climb. <laughs> I got a lot to look forward to then. By the end of the episode, we're all just laughing and joking around. It's pretty fun. <laughs> there you go. It's all about having fun. Yep. Yeah, it's it's a good time. Um, you know, we, we learn a lot. We hope our listeners learn a lot, you know, from – you know, the different interviews we do, like we get uh, like one of Brad's over the summer was with the um, over the batteries and we've gotten a huge, huge response about it's probably one of our best podcasts because people learn so much in the difference for fish finder batteries, you know, or yeah. lithium versus SLAs and the different kinds of lithiums. It's pretty cool. So that's the kind of stuff that we hope to do. And we're hoping to do with you because we're having Mark on. Like I said before, Brad and I actually uh, were on the Loveland Canoe and Kayak Fishing Team last year, and we uh, and was it the year before Brad you were yeah. on there partially as well? Yeah, 2018. And yeah, so we we've been close with Mark and Loveland, and we've worked with them, and we got to learn a little bit. Um, you know, as far as like what goes into the sales for the fish and kayaks and stuff. But what I found really interesting too, is I've known Mark for a while. I bought my kayaks when I originally bought them, um, back in like 2015 and, you know, as getting on the fishing team, we got to learn like Mark's like kind of thing is on the, the fishing kayaks, selling kayaks is more of a side gig that they do. And in kind of supplement of his act, the actual business, which is rentals. And, you know, I, um, I've met Mark a long time ago and knew that he already did that. And, uh, so we wanted to get some information, see like what it took for him to start something up, you know, like that, as well as, um, you know, a little of the history behind Loveland Canoe and Kayak. So Mark, feel free to introduce yourself, man, and go ahead and let us know what LCK is all about and how you guys got started. All right. Well, thanks again, guys. I appreciate you having me on. And uh, yeah, it's a really interesting story. And I always um, I like to share this one because it allows me to put the blame firmly on my wife for us being in this business. Um, both of us were outdoors people and our families had been entrepreneurial and owned their own businesses. So we both kind of grew up in the service business. I, I was in the restaurant business um, for a long time with my dad and, and Robin was as well. But um, we were... Uh, we were actually running on the Loveland bike trail training for the Chicago marathon back in 2003. And we happened to run across a sign in front of the canoe livery. It said, you know, the business was for sale. So, so Robin says we should buy it. And I looked at her and said, what do you, how would we do that? I mean, I'm in telecom. I uh, had been for a long time and she's a teacher still is a teacher. And she's like, I, I don't like to sit still in the summer. We'll hire some kids and we'll figure it out. So if you ever saw that movie with, um, uh matt damon called we bought a zoo where yeah. they buy a zoo and they have no idea what they're in for that was pretty much what happened here <laughs> um but we you know robin being a teacher had kind of access to a lot of great kids that had been in her class classes the years before and so we hired a staff and initially um this was a fleet of about 140 aluminum canoes and i think we had nine uh, kiwi kayaks but really at that time almost all of our business was canoes. We rented very few kayaks. We didn't even sell those out in the weekends. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, I, I stayed with my full-time job for nine years, worked that as well as the business. And we put money back into equipment 
and new vans, uh, trailers, um, growing the business, marketing it, and as well as in property improvements. So then uh, we had an opportunity to sell our home and we sold our home and we downsized. This was back in 2013. Uh, we downsized into an apartment, which was a move that a lot of people thought was crazy. So we went into an apartment for about a year and a half and we remodeled the, the uh, business upstairs and we moved in back in 2014. And so we live above the shop uh, and the business now. But, but as you pointed out, Josh, I mean, we started as a rental business. That's what this was. And we were, I would say 80% of our business happened on the weekends back then. Mm -hmm. So we were very busy on the weekends and then weekdays were kind of a, kind of a slow, uh, kind of relaxed pace. Uh, and over the years we started to, you know, see growth in the kayak field. And I happened to meet, uh, the, the, the vice president of sales from Jackson just came on board, Marty Cronin, uh, at a, at a paddle sports conference. And we started chatting and he was telling me about this new company. He was super excited. And, you know, I just thought, well, he's, he's enthusiastic and I will check it out. So when the very first Riviera came off the line, one of their reps drove it around and was kind of showing different shops. And when he got to my shop, I grabbed it off his truck and said, well, you sold one and uh, I'm going to keep this one here, but I'm going to put an order for 20. And so we started buying and bringing in the Jackson Rivieras. And that's how our relationship with Jackson evolved. And I think after about two or three years, um, we just started to do some light retailing just because our customers would ask about it and say, can you get this boat from Jackson? I see that you have Jackson's in your rental fleet. Can you get this boat from Jackson? And so we'd order them kind of on a special basis. And then eventually we got into uh, becoming a stocking dealer and we were exclusively Jackson for, for quite a while. Mm -hmm. uh, but I had an opportunity to meet a really neat guy, uh, Luther Cyphers. Mm -hmm. He used to come down to the Jackson dealer summits and he was there a couple years in a row and just really loved what his vision was all about. And of course he makes great products. Um, so when he launched his kayaks, you know, it was Jason Ricketts at the time was with us and uh, Jason was really enthusiastic about the bonafide line. So we brought it in and it's done, you know, it's just done fantastic for us. It's been a great compliment to Jackson. We've been really pleased. Um, a lot of, a lot of people, including Brad fish have fished out of that boat for mm -hmm. a number of years and, and really enjoy it. And, then about, well, last year, uh, I happened to be down in 2019. I was down in the Bonafide factory when they were still a separate company from Big Adventures. And I happened to see this other line of boats called Crest. And I thought, those are kind of neat, but I didn't really give it too much thought. And then a little bit later on, uh, Luther had posted about their Yakutak equipment being outfitted on all the uh, Crest and kayaks. So, I contacted them and we had a good conversation and we signed up last December and it proved just to be uh, the right, I guess the right decision at the right time. Yeah. Because we, we roll into 2020 and we hit this, you know, this, this pandemic, right? Yeah. Where it shuts down a lot of retail shops. Um, we were able to stay open because, you know, according to governor's orders, if you were a boat dealer or boat repair shop or a bike shop or bike, bike repair shop or in the automotive business you could stay open and so we were open with our inventory out front underneath the awning and you guys have seen that mm -hmm. set up before and i mean last april we were just off the hook busy we probably sold almost almost as many boats in the month of april as we do in an entire season yeah that's crazy and, yeah and the crescent line kind of just fit a nice niche because it's a it's a value price boat that allows people are just getting into the sport to you know to buy something that's affordable and build on it uh, but I've had a lot of experienced people. Brad's, I know Brad's paddling one now. A lot of experienced people have gotten into those kayaks too. So we feel like we've got a really good lineup right now with, with Jackson, Bonafide, and Crescent. Very happy with that. I agree with that 100%. I, that's like the three major brands. When you think of like a river or something, you think of those three. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, of course you guys know, I mean, the neat thing about our shop is we're right on the river. So yeah, that's, you know, it, it all kind of fits in and there's, there's a lot of good quality brands out there, but these fit for us. They really work well for us and we enjoy working with the companies. Yeah. And I, and I know there's uh there's quite a few other uh, paddle shops that I've talked to that they are envious about your property on the river. They're like, man, that'd be nice <laughs> to have. <laughs> yeah. We, we, we are definitely blessed. You know, it was um, like I said, it was totally by chance that, 
we ran by at the time and it was a pretty complicated process to put together the whole deal to buy it but we were determined and my wife and i really felt like we wanted a lifestyle business that uh, at the time our our kids were like 14 and 11 so we wanted a lifestyle business that we could raise them up in and have them have the chance to see what it's like to go to work every day, work hard at something that you believe in and that's something that you enjoy and something that's your your, your own. So our, our children have kind of grown up in the business, but we've had uh, a lot of staff members too that have spent seven, eight, nine, we've had, I think six staff members that have spent nine summers with us over wow. the years and a lot that have spent, spent four or five, you know, all through high school and into college. So they become part of your family is you, you guys know, you've gotten to know some of mm-hmm. the team over the years like joey and and nate um and they become you know part of the family and and also part of your brand i mean if i think a lot of people now um and i'm i'm totally fine with this i kind of disappear behind the scenes and you know people associate nate as running the shop and he he does a great job (laughs) at that yeah and i try to stay out of his way as much as i possibly can but it's 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 so um fascinating and rewarding to watch the kids kind of grow up in the business and take on additional responsibility and learn new skills. And then when they go out into the world, hopefully those things help them. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. They learn about service. They learn about taking care of customers. And this year, you know, I got to tell you, we, we got a whole new set of marching orders from the governor with uh, you know, the COVID guidelines. And um, we had talked about it a lot. We thought initially we were going to be heavily restricted. So we thought, well, we're going to have a very skeleton crew and just a very small, you know, number of boats going out each day. And once we got the, the guidelines and realized, you know, we had to include things like, you know, sanitizing each and every life jacket, every trip, sanitizing each paddle, every trip, um, space, you know, half capacity on our buses and vans, uh, automated check-in processes. Once we put those things into place, our staff really um, circled the wagons very quickly and put together what I think was a, a very efficient process. We had a lot of customers compliment, you know, that they felt very safe because of everything we were doing. Mm-hmm. And we had the opportunity this year to get a lot of people outdoors at a time when I think they really needed, you know, yeah. some nature therapy, right? To be outside, to get, uh, you know, out of their homes and be able to experience the fresh air and, and outdoors. Right. And I mean, with the with the epidemic, you know, crisis that kind of went on, like you guys, you know how this, you know how the business has been. We've, I've watched you guys go through your ups and downs with the rental because the previous season was yeah. awful because of yeah. the, the flooding and all yeah. the issues that you had, you know, and then just to turn around and, you know, we were all excited after the trade says like 2020, it's going to be the year. Mark's going to have a good rental year. And it's like, like, it's like Brad got sick at the show and then started yeah. the whole thing, man. Yeah. You know, and it was it was scary because it's like boop, you know, here here's this whole new set of rules you guys gotta follow. And but what ended up being cool about it was that the virus brought everybody out of their houses for one. Yeah. Like, you know, like we saw it in the fishing kayak industry, man. Like you couldn't go to Cabela's. You couldn't go anywhere and buy fishing stuff. Like mm-hmm. they'd be like, oh, we don't have any of those reels. You can buy the display one, you know, and we're not, we don't have a clue when they're coming back because everything's coming from overseas and Japan right. and China and stuff. And so, and the kayaks were virtually unheard of. So it was awesome that you guys happened to pick up Crescent. Like you said, it came at the right time because it gave you that good price point to hit people, especially with everybody's like, oh, I've got the uh, stimulus check. Let me right. you know, yeah. let me put a kayak in the garage, you know, <laughs> and, you know, it just happened to fall right in that amount of money, you know, like that people were like, okay, I can afford that. And, and it's a cool boat. Like the Crescent line, it's – um. It's a cool kayak with features that, you know, you could see it like cost more. You know what I mean? Like in, yes. it's it's got stuff, the ability to build upon it without having to drill holes in it and do a bunch of crazy stuff that you see sometimes those 800 price point boats. You know, you're like, oh, there's no gear tracks on that or, you know, yeah. and it, it, you kind of avoid that. You know, that, that little, uh, oh, do I, do I drill a hole here? You know, do I put, put a pop rivet in there and hold these down? You know, cause it, especially if you're new to the game and you are 
spending at eight hundred dollars, you don't know if that's necessarily safe. Like once you've spent some time, you know some of the DIY projects to be able to put a hole in the kayak and seal it properly, and you'll be good to go. You know, but um, yeah, it was definitely cool to see you guys be able to sell so many kayaks. I was definitely, definitely very happy to see that that you know didn't this virus didn't hold your business back and. You know, I didn't even know that you guys sold that many boats in April. That's awesome, man. <laughs> oh, it was, it was incredible. And I think one of the things that happened is, you know, at that time, everybody was kind of in lockdown mode. So you would have a, you know, a husband that wanted to look at the Bonafide 127. And he'd bring his wife along because they were shut in together, right? They had nothing else to do. Yeah. Uh, and they'd get there and immediately her eyes would catch that, you know, that sea foam crescent. And it'd be like, I want a kayak too. And we had so many of those dual kayak sales early yeah. on in the season where how's the husband going to say, no, honey, you can't have a kayak when he's going to put down 1700 on one. For that's that's how I right. bought mine, dude. That's how I bought mine. Danced and I turned around and I was like, well, why don't we get you a pink one? And she was like, okay. And I was like, this whole time, that's all I had to say. And let's get you a pink kayak. Like I talked to you for two years and you told yeah. me I was crazy. And then I say pink kayak and that was it. And you're a genius. No, it's, <laughs> it, it was really, it was interesting to see that. And I, and I, and I was really, I was excited for people too, because um, it was truly a habit or, or, you know, a hobby that they could do this summer. And I know a lot of people, we, we had incredible weather this year, mm -hmm. really were blessed with um, ideal weather for the rental business, but also I think for people who purchase kayaks to get out often. So I, I noticed not just the rivers, but local lakes and um, even some of the parks. Uh, there were a lot of people out on the water, and you know that's a, that's a great thing because it's growing the sport and getting more people into it. Hopefully, you know, even after all this pandemic is over, a lot of people have found something they really enjoy doing and can do together as spouses. Well, I guess that just depends, but you know, can do together. Um, but you know, something that's healthy and fun and outdoors. Yeah. Right. And uh, the other thing I was going to mention about the Crescent line is nobody foreseen uh, Drew Gregory leaving Jackson to go to Crescent either. And that, that's another thing where you guys hit it at the right time, I think. Uh, right when his – or right before he announces that, that he's uh, designing a new bo boat for Crescent, that gets people pumped up. Uh, I know there's plenty of people just out there waiting for – him to drop his new boat in 2021. So it's, it was the perfect timing for sure. Yeah. And I, I gotta tell you, I'm, I'm a very, I'm, I'm a blessed person lucky in a lot of ways. I'll tell you a funny Drew Gregory story. So <laughs> back when Drew was first coming on with Jackson and I was going down to the dealer summit, um, I, I just signed up for cabin, which they put people that didn't have, weren't running a whole cabin in kind of, they bunked him with other folks. Right. So, I'm in the bunkhouse with uh, with Drew Gregory, right? And you guys know I'm not a fisherman, so the name I, I heard his name. I knew he was involved with designing the uh, the Coos, of course, and that boat had just come out. Um, so we were in the same bunkhouse together, and then I actually signed up to go fishing, and I went fishing with Drew. They put me in his his pod, and I went fishing with him, and won't be a surprise, but I didn't catch anything, <laughs> but. I had a blast watching this guy fish because he was having so much fun fishing. I'm like, this is awesome. You know, I mean, I could see why people enjoy this so much. He was just like a little kid just out there, you know, splashing around, getting out of his boat, taking pictures, using his GoPro and so enthusiastic about it. So I would see him, you know, pretty much every year down at the dealer summit and always very approachable, very personal, personable. And, uh, you know, when he, when he parted ways with Jackson, I was disappointed, but knew something would come up for him. And then again, as you pointed out, Brad, when he resurfaced with Crescent, I was like, that's a great match because mm -hmm. uh, James from Crescent is just a, is a good family person who's all about creating um, fun boats to paddle, that paddle really well, provide good value, and, you know, more of a simplistic design than some of the others on the market. But I think to your point and what you're already seeing, Brad, I've seen, you know, some of the things you're doing you can really build upon that platform. You can make it your own. You can customize yeah. it. And I think that's uh, that, that's what kind of attracted Drew is that they both had very similar philosophies. And I think it's going to be a great partnership. Yeah. Right. And it, just going off of what you said about Crescent, the, the thing I like about it is just the simplicity of it. Yeah. 
And coming from Bonafide, I still love the Bonafide. I, I, I miss the 127, but hard not to. At, at some point, the bells and whistles just gets to be a little too much for me. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's going back to that simple way of kayak fishing and just going down the river with two rods and two tackle boxes. That's what I want to get back to. It, it, it's interesting. And again, you guys are a lot more tuned in with the specifics of the industry, but you know, I, I get to talk to a lot of fishermen um, as they come to our shop and kind of observe. And, and I think there's, you know, for a long time, it was the drive for the next, you know, the next greatest model with the next features. And I think that's still there and there's still a very healthy market for it. Um, and, you know, there are companies out there that are doing fantastic work, but there are a lot of people that have said, I wanted to make, go back and make this simple again. Yeah. So they, you know, they, they were drawn to Crescent. And I think the other thing that's really cool is people will buy, they'll buy that ultralight even a you know even a decent sized guy will buy that ultralight just because they want a boat if they only have two hours to go out that they can throw in the back of their pickup and get on the water and have fun and they don't have to have the trailer and all the other gear that goes along with it so i've had a, a number of people that have actually bought an ultralight and then come back and bought the light tackle so they say you know i want i want two different boats for you know different types of fishing one for longer you know durations out there one for shorter or they'll buy an, an ultralight and they'll buy a 127 because if they're going to fish tournaments, they want everything that the 127 brings them. But if they're just going to have a little bit of time out in the water, um, you know, that, that ultralight works really well, but it's a great paddling boat. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, that's what, that's what Robin's paddling now is the ultralight. It's, you know, you can, you can sit in that thing all day long. It's very comfortable. It just doesn't have all the, you know, the length and size to it or uh, all the bells and whistles that some of the other boats do. But as far as paddling and comfort, um, you know, it's, it's great for, for the money. Yeah, I agree. And it's, I think, you know, and that's that, that river outlook upon it, you know, like the, if you can keep it, you know, nice and simple on the river, you usually going to probably fish better because you're sitting there constantly moving. You don't want to take a ton of tackle. You don't want to be weighed down because something, you know, you know how the rivers are here, Mark. It's, it gets real shallow at points during the summer. Where you got to walk that boat. And the last thing you want to do is be dragging a boat that weighs 150 to 200 pounds because of all the gear in it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've watched Brad, you know, with the Bonafide, that thing, you know, that thing doesn't look like it weighs that much, but when you pick it up, it does, especially if you've got a ton of gear in it. And that's right. why, that's why I kind of fell in love with the Kilroy last year. Cause I was like, yeah. it was simple. It was a laid out simple type of thing. And then I was able to add a seat in there for the kids. I was like, this is awesome, man. You know, like, um, I, I can just throw my backpack behind me and take a couple rods and it, everything just fits like nice. I mean, the boat is a little on the heavy side. Don't get me wrong, but from picking up my Coos HD for so long, it's, it's nothing that's abnormal for me at this point. And I can cart that and that whole flat back back there is perfect to strap my cart down to. <laughs> it and, does well. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's a great kayak. It was, um, it was surprisingly fast. I found, you know, like, for you know for being as wide as it is um yeah. but you know it's it's it is it, it's 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 a good thing to have those different price points because i mean we i had you set up i have friends that have the setups for the like the lakes like you're talking about and it's like a hobie or jackson big rig and you've yeah. already got all your tackle and you got a fish finder you got batteries people got torpedoes on the back and that your boat man is weighing a ton at that point. And I know a guys who've got it set up and they don't even take it off their trailer. They literally drive it in like a boat, you know, and right back in. And they have, they have a whole separate kayak, you know, for the rivers now, because they're like, I am never going to, I don't want to put that near a river because of the, you know, the way it's set up. There's yeah. guys that do, you know, river stuff in those kayaks, but they usually are launching at ramps. Very, very, rarely are you seeing guys doing like you know coming down to like you know your standard you know boat launches on a little miami with their hobies like that you know it doesn't happen too often yeah no i i think you're right i think there's um there's a place in a, you know in a, in a market and a body of water um and and now there's a really a lot of choices of boats for all of that and that's that's, that's what's really cool um you know one of the things josh too i know you love to paddle with your boys and i i see 
uh, a lot of um, moms and dads that want to get out there with their kids, whether it's fishing or just paddling. Yeah. So having those boats like the Kilroy and um, like, you know, Crescent's new crew, which is cool because it's a, you can paddle a tandem, you can paddle it solo. But a lot of people are buying that saying, you know, if I've got a five, six year old, I want to go out with them and I want them to be able to fish without having to worry about managing their own boat so yeah. they can learn to love the sport. But in, you know, four, you know, three, four five years when they get old enough and have their own boat, I'll still have a kayak that I can fish solo. Or if I am going out with my buddies, I can use this kind of as, as a two in one type of model. So, yeah. and then I think the other thing, and this is probably not so much for fishermen, but a lot of people love bringing their dogs and oh, yeah. they'll come out and buy a boat just based upon the design and how it's going to fit their, you know, their four legged friends. So that's really funny to see that too. They'll, they'll bring the dog out, have them sit down on the boat and do they fit? Um, so we see that too. It's just, it's, you know, it's, it's really interesting to see how the market's grown and, and changed. And of course, you know, for us, again, coming from buying the business in 2004 is when we first, our first season was, and 90, I would say 98% of our rentals were canoes. And last year before COVID, I think we were about 65% kayak rental. Yeah. And this year, you know, because of COVID, we were only kayak and tandem kayak rentals. And a lot of people that had never been in one before, once they got in it, they said, you know what, I'm, I'm not going back to a canoe. Unless I've got two small ones like, like you do, Josh, well, yeah. where it really makes sense. But for a lot of people, it's like, if I'm going to go out with my spouse or one of my kids, this tandem kayak is great. And if I'm going out with older people, then solo kayaks are just a fun way to go and get on the water. Right. Brad, you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. I'm just, just sitting here <laughs> listening. <laughs> um, you got any questions? Oh, no. I was just going to go into the next thing if you were well, good. I got one. Um, so what do you think so far up until 2020 from the time that you – have um you know since you guys have started the business what do you think is your like kind of your your hardest challenges for the business so far oh it, that, that's a great question i think that changes has changed over time initially it was just making enough money to open the next year you know that was a really big part of it because to, to buy the business we took a mortgage out on our house so we were kind of all in on this thing and, and I was thinking originally, you know, I'll keep my full-time job for a couple of years. Well, it was nine years. And in that first nine years, I didn't draw a salary. So it was all going back into, you know, again, new equipment and building improvements and, and trying to grow the business. And once we developed a little bit of a rhythm, um, the probably, as you pointed out, Josh, prior to this year, the four or five years before that, we, we were dealing with a lot of kind of different weather challenges where, we would lose a lot of days to heavy rains and then, you know, high waters and uh, dam releases. So the unpredictability is a challenge. It's mm -hmm. just, it doesn't matter how much planning or marketing um, or preparation you do, you know, the weather is really going to dictate the success of your season. And uh, this year, again, all things kind of came together where the weather is fantastic. The demand was super high and we were able to get a lot of people out because we had a lot of serviceable days and we did things like we went, ran on the half hour instead of the hour. And we just brought in more staff to um, run those trips because we were running half capacity in our vehicles. But the net effect was we were just able to get a lot more people out. So every year um, something new comes up challenge wise. I mean, we, we uh, love being in the business. We love being outdoors. We really enjoy working with the kids. And uh, I know for my wife, they, they become real important to her. She gets emotional at the end of the season when she knows mm -hmm. that this person or that person is working their last shift and she's not going to see them because they're graduating from college and getting a full-time job. Mm -hmm. So it's like watching your own kids grow up. But, um, you know, we fought different battles, but like any small business, I think it's really important to keep your eye on what you're, what you're all about and what you're trying to accomplish and uh, work hard and don't, you know, I have never gotten to the point where I think I know everything or even know a lot about this business. I keep asking questions and I even challenge my young staff to think about what, how they would do this differently. And I'm amazed at the, I guess the, the brilliant ideas that they come up with where you get stuck in a certain way. And I mean, this is what, this was what, a great lesson that COVID served up. There were certain like sacred cows in our business that we had done 
because we learned that from being in the industry, watching other, you know, people that were doing the same, the same business. And we've been doing that all along. And this year we were forced to do a lot of things differently. And some of those things have transformed our business for the better and will be a, you know, part of it going forward. Mm -hmm. So you can never stop growing, you know, you can never stop learning. And, and it's, that's, what's really cool about being around this group of young people because they bring an energy and an enthusiasm. You guys have been awesome because you've opened up uh, a, a lot of avenues and a lot of doors to the fishing community in our shop. And so we've developed that type of clientele. And um, Josh, you were talking about how we were primarily uh, a rental business in the past. You know, I would say the retail was 15, 20% of, of gross. Mm -hmm. I think this year we were probably looking at 25 to 30% retail. That's awesome. So it's a big change. Yeah, it's a big change. And I, who knows, you know, uh, I think this year is going to start off strong. I really do in kayak sales. There are a lot of people that didn't get a kayak last year or didn't get the kayak they wanted. So we're still seeing, you know, good kayak activity now in the off season. People were available to, to meet people by appointment. But um, I think the demand is still going to be high. But, you know, we'll, we'll kind of see how the curve goes in the future. But for right now, um, I think it's all about, you know, introducing people to the sport, helping them to learn mm -hmm. how to do it safely how to build upon the experience and making sure that it's a positive one for them so that they want to continue to do it. And then kind of invite their friends as you guys have, you've, you've grown the sport by inviting friends of yours who maybe have never fished off a kayak before to do so. And, mm -hmm. and then they find that, Hey, this is a great way to go. Yeah. Yeah. I can't, I can't tell you, or I can't begin to tell you how many people uh, reach out on Instagram or something, you know, guys from Columbus or, uh, Indiana or Indiana, Indianapolis, Eastern Kentucky, or they're like, "What well, does Loveland have this? Do, do they have that? I'm like, they, they, if they don't, they probably can get it for you. If you do, and you're like, <laughs> they're like, sweet. I'm going to come out there and uh, check them out. I was like, awesome. Go do it. Um, yeah, it if it's, it's, for those, I'm sorry, Mark, for sorry. some of the people that are um, like, cause what Mark's referring to, especially with the weather is, you know, not only, <laughs> Not only are, is their rental business taking a hit, but their actual business is taking a hit a lot, a few times. Mm -hmm. One of the crazy things that I got to experience, you know, being close with Loveland was the fact that Mark's shop and they live above the shop, like they renovated the up second level of this place. And so Mark's the actual shop and the rental area is all downstairs and they are 20 yards from the little Miami river. So when the little Miami river decides to rear its ugly face, it likes to knock on Ma uh, Mark's back door and enter the building without permission. <laughs> and so they've, you guys, I mean, it's crazy. So any, and Mark happens, their business is located in Loveland, Ohio, which is actually one of my favorite cities that I've actually ever visited. Um, and it just, it's not far from me, you know, I love Loveland. They've got great food. They got this little quaint downtown area mm -hmm. and you guys are smack dad in the middle of it. And it's just a great setting. It's like perfect to set up. If you wanted to just go take out the family for the day, you guys can go down, go rent a kayak, go have some lunch, some ice cream down there. It's just, it's just a cool little like small town vibe to it. And you know, it's not far from Cincinnati really whatsoever. No. And you know, and it's been, it's crazy to see how tight knit your, your guys' community is down there because, you know, like I've seen this, some of the stuff that you've done, like for the city itself, as well as the city, when Mark has had the flooding issues from the river, that city comes together and people are out there always helping them try to, you know, knock back the floodwaters. I mean, I've seen you guys out there with sandbags. I remember the drone videos of it. Um, like it's crazy. Like how, like a lot of the rental facilities, it's just a business there. You know, these people aren't living on the property most of the time. There might be a few, but, you know, from what I understand. And then, you know, or they don't even like really kind of, they're just using the public launches. You know what I mean? It's like a facility and it's like this little shack and it's near the river, but it's not, it's not as, you know, you guys have a big facility when you think about it in terms of a rental facility and that, and it's so close to the river, but you get to wake up every day and look at it, you know, that's what's yeah. awesome. It's beautiful. No, it, it really is nice. My uh, my wife and I sometimes we look out the back door and we see the uh, you know the railroad tracks and the river and you know you, you feel like you're on vacation. You know you really do. 
So it's we, we, we definitely are blessed and we are lucky to have, you know, found this place in downtown Loveland. And Josh, you're, you're right on. I mean, it's a special community with a lot of other, um, you know, family owned businesses here. It's 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 not your big chains. It's a lot of family run businesses. So everybody works together. And when things have gotten difficult you know, several years ago, you know, when the fires came and burned out the downtown um, to see the community support for those businesses that lost everything um, and helping them kind of rebuild and then reestablish their businesses was inspiring. And uh, during COVID, uh, you know, the city did things um, like making designated parking for carryout. Um, the fire department put up a bunch of, um, of, of you know, kind of dining tables with umbrellas outdoors along the trail so that people could buy food and eat outdoors, you know, in the early days. And that's just carried over to uh, creating, you know, a greater experience for people when they come down to Loveland that you can uh, start the day with a, you know, canoe or kayak trip. Um, you can go bike riding. You can grab some lunch, have some ice cream and really make it a day. A lot of people this year was, uh, again, an interesting year because a lot of people that came out were here for the first time and they were like, I never knew this was here. I never knew huh. that there was all this, all this to do in Loveland. Yeah. Um, but once they got here, they realized the bike trail, you know, you can walk, you can go for a walk and then you can have lunch. We've got a great little coffee shop, mile 42 that just opened up right at the beginning of the pandemic. And mm. it's been phenomenal to see people come by and support them first through the carryout window, which is all they could serve for a while. Mm -hmm. But uh, now just, you know, supporting the business and making it viable and uh, they're doing a great job. So it's a neat, it's a neat town. Again, we're lucky to be here. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Well, you want to get into some uh, talk about dealers, uh, how, how, what it's like to uh, deal with all your dealers and uh, just how, how, how that interaction goes. Sure. Yeah. What do you guys, what do you guys want to know? Um, just I, anything to do with like interacting, uh, I don't know just what, what it's like to talk with somebody who is in the industry and how that comes to be about placing orders and sending them boats to you and all that sort of yeah. thing. Yeah. It's, it, you know, it, it really is a neat industry. Um, I've, you know, I spent a lot of years in, in big corporations in telecom and uh, you know, I, I did really well and made a great living for my family. And there's a lot of things I liked about it, but it, it does become somewhat impersonal when you work for a company that's got 17,000 employees or, or 40,000 employees. So what's cool about this industry is you really develop strong relationships. You know, and I'll go back to Jackson, you know, meeting, meeting Marty Cronin at the paddle sports conference and developing a relationship with him, you know, that led over to a, a very, a long standing business relationship where you you begin to feel like you're part of the family. You know, I go down to Jackson to pick up my kayaks and I see the same people in, in accounting and marketing and sales that have been there for many years. And so it feels like you're going home, right? You're seeing people that are very familiar to you and um, folks at Bonafide too. I mean, like I said, I had a chance to meet Luther a couple of years before he launched Bonafide. And you could just see a real burning like desire in him to make great products, you know, mm -hmm. make great products and really have a company that people liked working for. And even today, if I were to send him a text, and I don't do this very often because I know he's a very busy guy, but if I were to send him a text or a message, he would respond to me within hours. Mm -hmm. He's that he's that in tune with the business. And now dealing with Crescent, um, it's like kind of going back to the early days of Jackson. This is a, a smaller company. Uh, James is the founder. He's a young guy uh, that has kind of been a lifelong uh, water person. Life, you know, I think he he just loves the paddling experience. And I've I've talked to him on Sunday afternoons when I can hear one of his kids like sitting on his lap. You know, right. that and, and he he loves talking about what he's doing. And then Eric Hughes is his sales manager, and I've. I've called Eric at all hours of the night just to talk and, and to get educated. And there's such a willingness to freely share information and, and not just, you know, about their line, but about the sport mm -hmm. and to help it grow. And I, you know, I have a rep for old town too, a guy named Mark Polinski that uh, 
Mark was one of the people that helped us to build this business because in the early days, I'd call him up and say, what kind of stuff do I use to stabilize my beach? And he'd been around so many people in the paddle sports business. He had seen it all and he always would have, you know, great recommendations and great suggestions. So the thing I love about it is, you know, I, I told Robin, it's just like, it's just like working with people that you would love to work with. Mm -hmm. If, even, you know, if you had the choice, these are the people you'd work with because they're, they're hardworking. They're very committed to making great products, uh, but they're all about having fun too. And I think that was really evident with, you know, Eric Jackson, he always made sure that part of his, you know, part of his work was fun and getting out on the water and, and getting mm -hmm. a chance to kind of stretch the boundaries and introduce new people to the sport and to see the guy. I, I go from a you know world class whitewater paddler, which he still is, to a you know pretty darn good kayak fisherman. Yeah, and himself. It's, yeah. it's it's been fun to watch that. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's it's cool to see that happen with you know because I mean I guess it's it's a I don't want to say small. Um, it's this kind of industry, you know, and it's like you said, you worked in the tele the telecommunication stuff, right? And I worked in insurance stuff, and I've worked here, and but it's not a lifestyle, you know, like yep. kayaking and outdoor sports and stuff. Kind of tends to push you into like a lifestyle of being outdoors like hunting does or you know whatever hiking you know mountain tracking doesn't matter like you're right. cave spelunking but you kind of take on a persona that kind of matches up with those passions that you have and it's cool because that translates really well over to a business like this where you meet very good good people family friendly people you know like it's just it's it's people willing to help each other because they kind of know in the end it is it's it's a business, but it is still about having fun. That's why they most of these people most people get into it. You're like, you know, like you got into it. I mean, you were like, oh well, we don't know what we're doing, but you did it because you were like, we love the outdoors. How awesome yeah. would it be to literally our business is you know driven by this, you know, yeah. and we it's a part of our lives on a daily basis. You know, it's not a lot of people get that opportunity to work in the you know the industry like that and. You know, it it's it's like it's that whole mantra. You, you won't work a day in your life if you're doing what you love kind of thing, you know, mm -hmm. and it's true. You know, that's why I've always wanted to try to get into the business of what we're doing and stuff. And, you know, that's why I enjoy doing the podcast. The more I talk about it, the more we kind of get involved with it, the more I kind of realize how much I like it. And I'm like, you know, it's it doesn't feel like work, you know, yep. like sitting yep. down doing the podcast and stuff isn't really work we're sitting there talking about stuff that we love you know it, yeah you guys are definitely passionate about it and and i think um you know again josh for you with with having two young boys it, what a blessing it is to be able to get them involved and to teach them a love uh, for the outdoors and fishing when they're when they're kids because i think for all of us those are some of our fondest memories right we don't mm -hmm. you know we don't we don't think back about a lot of things in our childhood as finally as we do about the time we spent together in the outdoors with our family and, um, you know, just, just what you can learn and teach them. And I think today, as we've talked before, unfortunately, the opportunity for children to get outdoors uh, is not as great as it was when we were growing up. And so, you know, to create those things and to create those platforms for you to spend those times with your kids. So they grow up loving, the outdoors, loving rivers, loving lakes, you know, they're going to have a greater sense of stewardship and want to take care of those things going forward as well. But they're also going to learn a lot of valuable lessons because mm -hmm. nature teaches you those lessons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, She teaches you, you might have to sit in your kayak for eight hours and not catch anything. Yeah. <laughs> or stare <laughs> Been at a there screen. Plenty of time. <laughs> or stare at a screen. Yeah. Be uncomfortable, you know, but I mean, I, I know Zach, he's taken to it, man. He he loves it. Me and Ricketts took our boys and we met up with a friend of his and we did the little uh, like overnighter and yeah. we had an absolute blast. And Zach got to sit like right on the nose of the kayak and, you know, because he was watching Pierce do it on Jason's. I'm like, well, dude, this thing's better than that one that you've got an entire seat up there, you know? Yeah. And uh, he he adores it, you know, and we had a lot a lot of fun in that boat. And I, I'm excited to take him out more this year because I was still a little apprehensive of it previously because he's a little he's a little small. And I was like, you know, he's 
doesn't know how to swim a hundred percent, you know, but even though he's wearing a life jacket, I kind of, you know, I have that safety conscious mind sure. about it, you know, and it's like, you know, I know some of the stuff that happens in these rivers isn't always the best thing, you know, where people aren't paying attention or whatever, but it's, uh, it's definitely awesome, man. It, you're right. It's, it's going to be exciting to let them grow up and do things like that. Cause I didn't do stuff like that. I didn't do things like this until I got to be older. Cause I didn't grow up in the household, you know, that was involved in the outdoors like that. I didn't really start doing this stuff until I went to college and then mm -hmm. got out in college where people were going backpack trips and, you know, doing things like that. And I went to OU and OU has, you know, all the Wayne national forest around it. And, yeah. you know, we went backpacking out there. So when I came back here, it kind of had a new kind of newfound love for, you know, camping and hiking and stuff and fishing, you know, wade fishing was like, basically backpacking but fishing at the same time for me mm -hmm. so, or you know trail hiking but yeah well i think you guys too probably recognize that uh, we're, we're really blessed in this area too with the amount of things that you can do outdoors in the proximity of oh, you know yeah. good quality rivers uh yeah. lakes places to hike places to mountain bike all of that is is a lot closer than i think sometimes people realize in cincinnati yeah, mm -hmm. oh yeah so, i mean there's yeah, a pretty nice super nice mountain biking facility right at caesar's creek in there yes if i remember correctly yeah east right. fork has got one as well and uh yeah caesar's creek has one um there's a small one down by terrell park i mean it's i think it's just a couple miles but i see people there you know kind of mountain biking there on uh on that area behind uh right off of 50 there so yeah there's a lot there's a lot of places and of course the bike trail goes like 70 miles and i just uh I was just reading something today that they were talking about, um, you know, a lot of these bike trails are on the old rail line. So the rails to trails program has been successful. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this pandemic has driven a lot of people outdoors who have found new ways of getting to work, you know, commuting by bike mm -hmm. or exercising. And so they're, they're talking about a, an actual um, trail connected that you could go from the East Coast all the way to the state of Washington comes through Ohio, comes come through Cleveland, down through Columbus. And I think it looked like to me it was going to probably go through kind of Dayton. But you could literally ride your bike coast to coast on a trail that was designated for, yep. you know, no car traffic, just biking. And that's, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah, I saw that recently. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, the, There was one thing I wanted to touch that we kind of went over uh, a few minutes ago, but it, you mentioned – James uh, Durbecker and Luther Cyphers uh, just being very communicative with you. And I, I've seen that firsthand. And so has Josh, actually, he has a story about James. I don't know if he want to share it, if he wants to share it or not, but uh, I see them constantly in their own uh, Crescent owners group and bonafide owners group answering questions every day yeah. in those forums. Those are the only two guys I've seen do that from those kayak companies. Well, maybe AJ McWhorter for Hobie, but, those two guys, they're pretty active with customers. I think that's cool. They're very engaged. And, and I think, you know, wise enough to realize that it, it makes sense to keep connected so that you know what your customers are asking for, um, what mm -hmm. they perceive, you know, your products to be, where they fit into the marketplace. Um, it is really, it's really cool to see people that love what they do. And I, you know, James, the, um, I guess the, the slogan of Crescent is, is uh, live in the current, right? I and love it. I do. I, I love it. And I think that's kind of where his mindset is, you know, live in the current, which means in the water, in the stream, in the movement, but also in the present, right? So mm -hmm. be present when you have that opportunity to be with your kid outdoors or when you have that opportunity to fish, you know, on a beautiful river and recognize that that's a gift and it's a blessing. And to enjoy that while you're doing it, because again, a lot of people in, in other parts of the country don't have access to those things. And there are many people that just don't have the ability to get out and do that type of thing at all, ever. Mm -hmm. That's part of, I, you know, you guys know we're involved with the the adventure crew where we get urban teens into outdoor activities like uh, kayaking and hiking and mountain biking. You know, it's a nonprofit that gets those, you know, Cincinnati public school kids and Northern Kentucky public school kids outdoors and to see like the joy and the pleasure that the kids get from being outside and mm -hmm. doing something in nature 
for the first time, it's it's truly rewarding. Yeah. It's truly rewarding. I agree. Pretty awesome. So, Josh, I don't know if you wanted to share your story, but no, uh, we can talk about it after the fact. So, um, <laughs> All right. you know, like, but it's like we said, you know, with with a lot of the you know heads of these kayak companies and even the smaller companies, you know, like the more people I get to meet, you know, there's there's a lot of there's good people. Obviously, within the industry, you've got yeah. you've got some bad people here and some bad seeds here and there, but overall, like it's such a kind of a close knit community it's cool to see like you know even with people who are just recreational paddle and or whitewater paddle and the kayak fishing community it's really cool to see kind of all that kind of mesh together like i know like jackson's one of the companies that i get excited you know like that's this is one reason i've always kind of been a big supporter of them because they're so spread out they've got so many kayak lines they're in whitewater you know they're in touring kayaks you know they've got ocean style kayaks they just got everything right and what's cool is that with the jackson groups like on facebook you get to see that stuff happening like you get to see the new f freestyle boats come out and the cool video drop of dane out you know <laughs> dropping over 100 foot waterfalls and just be like dude he's alive yeah or, you know have you ever seen the video where they go down that storm drainage chute it's insane like and they're just in the kayaks and it's literally this much water and it's mostly grass and yeah. it's the coolest thing. And, you know, and then we're all laughing as fishermen because we're like, who's going to try that, in the, you know, in the big rig? <laughs> Not me. Not me. But um, <laughs> it's 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 cool to see that, you know, like there's kind of different um, angles of the sport, you know, there's different things kind of come together and cheer each other on. So that's one thing I've always liked about Jackson because, like, you know, they've dropped those those videos and you're like, dude, that's amazing. And, you know, even like the fishermen are like congratulating the, you know, the freestyle guys on, you know, those cool moves that they're doing and, you know, the competitions that they're winning and stuff. So. Well, it's, yeah. I mean, it, it creates a community, which I think is really important and reminds us of, of what we have in common. Um, and there's a, the slogan for American rivers is rivers connect us. Mm -hmm. And they really do, right? They bring us together. Uh, they give us a common place to go and to uh, recreate, to explore, to have fun. And uh, and then we find out, you know, we got a lot of things in common with, with other folks. And I think that's, again, something beautiful about the sport. And, and you're right, Josh, we've, you know, we've got some recreational people that are closely affiliated with our shop. And, you know, to see people that have been in the sport for 10 or 12 years and really know their stuff, reach out to somebody brand new and be willing to take them under their wing and educate them on how to enjoy the sport but also how to do it safely you know because mm -hmm. there is a lot to this and, and you guys know you've probably had your own experiences but you you buy into this sport and there's transporting and moving your kayak well that has mm -hmm. to be done safely and we've seen uh you know some situations where people haven't been careful boats have come come off trailers and people have lost something that they really you know they really cherish they lost a boat or you know they've done some damage to it another vehicle but it's good to see that community come together and really be willing to uh, bring new people into it and teach them and educate them that's that's a cool part about it as well yeah all right well cool yeah this this was a fun episode i'm i, I believe we're winding down unless you guys got anything else you want to add no it wasn't much about fishing but it was great to talk to you guys and uh, and again i i appreciate what you and Josh do for our shop. I mean, we would not have the same presence in the fishing community without your efforts. And you guys are terrific ambassadors for the sport and for Loveland Canoe and Kayak. So we appreciate it. We have a lot of fun and we continue to learn and and uh and, and just love what you guys are doing. You don't have to tell Nate Dog that I miss him. Yeah. <laughs> uh you know what? Uh <laughs> Nate uh Nate got to go to the national championship game. So I saw that. Yeah. So I think it was a rough week sports weekend for him because he was pulling for Pittsburgh and Ohio State. So <laughs> just didn't go well. He's sitting, oh. is he sitting at home sulking right now. You know, <laughs> no, he's, he's in Miami beaching it up right now. That's right. Yeah, he's probably <laughs> enjoying the warm weather, but you know, he's 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 a great kid. We are so lucky to have him. Uh, he just takes ownership of the business like it's his own and he just takes care of things, but he's also one of those people that just people naturally gravitate to. And he's, yeah. 
developed a lot of uh, I think strong relationships with people in the in the fishing community as well as in the paddling community. So he brings a lot to the shop. And there's another example of a person that's willing to kind of share and educate. And when new people come on board, Nate really takes the time uh, to take to show them the ropes and teach them kind of the finer nuance nuances of our business. And, yeah. and he'll do the same thing. I mean, he can talk he can talk fishing for hours with people. Yeah. I, I told Mark this already, Josh, but uh, uh, Chris Yalk, he, he, uh, I was fishing with him a couple weeks ago and he's like, I can't buy a kayak from Nate anymore. I was like, why? Or I can't go into Loveland anymore. I was like, why? He's like, because every time I go in there, Nate sells me a kayak. <laughs> <laughs> and he, doesn't a great like, guy. he doesn't feel like you're, you're, you're being sold a kayak. You know, it's like he, he's just so uh, passionate and knowledgeable, too. Yeah. Um, you know, his dad told me one time that uh, he goes, you know, he really studies this stuff. I wish I could get him to study his school work. Because I'm sure he'll like, he'll study the competition and watch all these podcasts. I know, I know you guys like to do that too. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, he, he's, you know, looking at all, checking out videos online and his, his knowledge across the board of, of kayaking and fishing is really, is really credible. And he's the type of person that if we don't have the right boat, for the customer that's in our shop, he'll be very honest about that. You know, say, hey, mm -hmm. you know, I think what you're looking for is, is probably a Hobie and you should go see Brian at Strictly Sale. Yeah. Um, you know, because that if that's what's right for the customer. And I'm totally on board with that. Again, it's for us, it's it's just about helping people to enjoy it. And we we offer certain lines. We love them, but they're not the only ones in the industry. And there's a lot of great products out there. So I think collectively, you know, we grow the sport by, you know, those quality vendors making good products that help us to enjoy being out there and doing what we love to do. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. So is Nate uh, at the shop for the long run or what, what, what's his plans? If I have anything to say about it, he's never leaving. <laughs> <laughs> if you looked at him and go, why are you still in school? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, no, Nate, Nate, you dude, you know what I, what I love most about Nate is he, you know, he's not – you know how millennials get this bad rap, right? And yeah, he is not. he has got an old soul about him. Like oh, yeah. talk to him, like he is very down to earth. He is not a really social media kind of person, really at all. Nope. Um, he busts his butt, he works hard, he's in school, you know. And but when you talk to him, it was hilarious because <laughs> when we were doing the shows this, you know, last winter, he'd be sitting there and he's like, Man. My knees are killing me. I'm like, you sound like I should be like what I should be complaining about right now because I'm 40 and here you are like in your early 20s, buddy. You know, and he and so we got to joking around and I would call him the old man when he'd walk in and he's because <laughs> every day he was like something hurts. Yeah, and, well, he was, uh, he was a wrestler in high school and I think it yeah. uh, took its toll on him. But, you know, he he uh, yeah, he's just a. A great young man and he you know he does a lot of reading and a lot of again listening to podcasts outside of fishing too just yeah to broaden his perspective on business and in life so you're right he's when you talk to him you feel like you're talking to somebody that's walked this earth for 40 or 50 years in terms of his knowledge and his business acumen so he's a, he's a lot of fun to be around he really is he's family I, I, yeah. yeah i bet well, cool, man. We'll, we'll end that there because that was a good stopping point. It was right. a good segment. Uh, thank, thanks again for coming on. My pleasure. Thank you guys for having me, and uh, you know, all the best this winter with the podcast. And soon enough, weather will be warm, and we'll all be back on the water. Oh, I'm already forward. been on the water. <laughs> yes, I know you have. Demo days. Yeah, no, I'm looking forward to those too. But that was a pretty nice bass you caught there. Yeah, nineteen and three quarter. That was a good one. Uh, yeah, I was to say, pretty close to twenty. Brad's That's like, a, yeah. <laughs> oh, Brad Hicks, dude, Catch I gas everywhere. <laughs> I'm itching to get out there again already. I don't care how cold it gets. <laughs> as long as so, you have the right gear, right? I mean, that's the yes. most important thing. You got to have the right gear. Yes, exactly. So, thank you guys. You guys have a great night, and uh, thank you, Mark. We'll see you real soon. Yeah, is uh, before you go, anybody you want to shout out real quick or anything? Um, man, I don't even know who I can shout out that I haven't shouted out already, but, uh, just thank my staff again for a phenomenal year. The kids, um, just responded to the whole COVID situation extremely well. 
we were able to stay open because of them. And they uh, they work hard and they kind of bring the business to life. I tell people a lot of times, I sort of feel like Walt Disney and these are my characters. You know, I'm just a guy behind the curtain and I got these great characters like Goofy and Mickey and Minnie <laughs> and they go out there and, and they bring joy to our customers. And so for me, it's a lot of fun. It's very rewarding to see that. And I know my wife feels the same way. So we're blessed and we love having you guys around too. It's been cool to expand the family and, and kind of just see what you guys bring to the table. Yep. yep. I'm, I'm excited for 2021 for sure. Me too. Let's hope it's, yeah. Let's hope yep. it's a great year. Yep. I hope so. I need a good year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, Josh, you do. Another 20. I'm, I'm calling it now. <laughs> <laughs> oh lord <laughs> all right, all right man. man close us out buddy yep thanks for uh listening guys you guys made it this far uh we'll see you guys next thursday have a good day thanks for tuning in to another killer episode on paddle in finn don't forget to go check out our website at paddle the letter n in finn.com don't forget to check out the youtube channel at paddle and finn if you got a question comment want to hear from a future guest on a future episode feel free to email us at paddle the letter n in finn at gmail.com don't forget to follow us on social media at paddle and finn on facebook and instagram shout out to our show supporters angler the angler button and app just makes for a better time on the water and creates a virtual logbook for every fishing outing out on the water. Shout out to Rocktown Adventures, located in Northern Illinois, for all your kayaking, camping, and hiking needs. Shout out to Jigmasters Jigs. When in doubt, get the jig out. Go to jigmasters.com.